Last week we left you in Dubrovnik after travelling through Albania and Montenegro. This week we're heading to the small town of Ston, an hour's north of Dubrovnik, and we're going to be scuba diving to an underwater wine cellar. You're a rebel, getting into trouble. You are kind of like a fire, like a fire, like a fire. Unpredictable, so original. You are never backing down, backing down, backing down. That's what I like about you. After researching loads on what to do in Dubrovnik, I stumbled across a scuba dive down to an underwater wine cellar. It was about an hour's drive from Dubrovnik and they did arrange transport, but we were going that way anyway and decided to give it a go. We had never heard of Mali Ston, or even Ston for that matter. Both are set on the peninsula just north of Dubrovnik. Ston is a beautiful small town rich in history due to its strategic location is surrounded by three seas and protected by four mountains. The region is not as well known as Dubrovnik, although its walls are much longer, and the region boasts that it produces some of the most delicious mussels and oysters in the world. We managed to find an area for us to park using our app called Park for Night, just outside of Mali Stop. At first we tried to go to this parking but we were too big and had to reverse down a very narrow road late at night. We then decided to go to this parking instead. Despite it having a one star review, it was late and already dark so we thought we would stay there anyway and evaluate the following morning and move on if we did not feel comfortable leaving the RV there. We are on our way to Ston, these are the oldest town walls in the whole of Europe. Ston is also famous for being the longest active salt lakes as well. So let's go. What have you just bought then, Luke? Sunglasses. <sighs> well, my previous sunglasses I've had for 27 years, right? <laughs> and Charlotte keeps claiming that she keeps finding them, she keeps picking them up when I leave them on tables, on buses, on ferries, all sorts. I was flying the drone two days ago and I think I left them on the roof of the motorhome when I was flying the drone, so... Um, we then drove off with them. We drove still on the roof. Off with them, still on the roof, and I realised about an hour and a half down the road and I couldn't find them. So I've had to buy some new ones. They're only a temporary fix because the other ones will turn up. They always do. I've just temporarily misplaced them. <laughs> so yeah. Can you jump in? Lucy said he was going to catch me in case I fell. I didn't mean. I didn't realise he meant on camera. The old town walls of Ston are amongst the oldest in Europe and despite being much longer than those in Dubrovnik, they are much less known by tourists. The walls are often referred to as the European Walls of China. They were initially built in the 14th and 15th century and are about 5 kilometres in length. It usually takes about 45 minutes to walk from Ston to Maliston and here most people stop for lunch. If ever you visit, be sure to eat at Botasade. The restaurant has been established for many generations and is located in an old salt warehouse. We stopped and had a few oysters to begin with, a huge pot of mussels to share, and washed all down with a nice bottle of white wine. On the first page of the menu, the restaurant explains that you're about to eat everything that has either been grown, caught or reared within one kilometre of where we're sat. Ston is home to the oldest operating salt lakes in Europe. It was possible to go for a tour, but we did it our own way and sent the drone up. It was great to see the different phases of salt extraction and it all looked pretty amazing. The town of Ston itself is relatively small and there isn't much to do. You can walk the street, stop for a coffee and have a bite to eat. It's definitely worth a visit if you're in the area, but wouldn't recommend making a special trip there. So where are we going today? Scuba diving! En route to the dive centre, we realised how little petrol we had left. After searching for petrol stations on the peninsula, we came to the conclusion that it was very unlikely to reach either of them. We decided to continue on our way and worry about it later.
We were given a quick safety talk and went through the safety signals. In no time, we were walking to the port area in all our gear, loaded onto the boat and taken a few minutes away from the shore. Even at this depth, the GoPro was playing up the pressure. However, we did manage to get this fantastic shot of my hair. Wasn't too impressed when I was sort of close, so, but hey, I thought I looked cool. Once we were back on shore, we remembered about our petrol situation. So what's happened? Luke's almost run out of petrol again. Luke? Luke. He was the one driving. He was the one in charge. He was the one responsible. <laughs> Have we run out of petrol yet? Not yet, but we can't actually go anywhere because we're about to run out of petrol because Luke is almost run out of petrol so what would be what, how many times has it been Luke? this uh, would be the third time? no it's the third. first time this week actually <laughs> yes first time this week <laughs> and the first time in Croatia yeah first time this month first time this month first time in September first time in September we've got a few firsts actually <laughs> First time on a so late in the week as well because you did two in one week, didn't you? Or are we not mentioning that? No, I'll edit that bit out. <laughs> so what's the dilemma then? How much petrol have we got? I don't know. We're on the red apparently. So not much. And where's the petrol station? A long way away. Closest one is a half an hour drive away. I managed to sweet talk the waiter into convincing his father to get some petrol for us. His father was out fishing in a small boat and was able to travel across sea to a small island where they had a port and a petrol station. As we waited, we enjoyed the great food and a couple of beers in the sun. After this, we headed to the Adivo wine bar further around the coast for our wine tasting. On the back wall of the bar were all the different bottles of wine. Some had been stored in regular cellars, others in wine crates 10 metres deep in the sea, and others had been stored in pottery vases beneath the sea. We've just been doing a wine tasting, and this particular bottle has been stored under sea for two years. And so we've just tried it now. You can actually see all the different sea creatures and the seaweed that's been growing on it. But well, the bottle looks really cool at least. Jellyfish. Oh, they did something. They really left it. Ouch! No, ouch! Left ouch! Left Way back, I was looking at the boats and got really excited and curious when I saw what I thought was a boat that looked like a cow. Me being me, had to go and investigate and work out why this boat looked like a cow. As we got closer, we realised this wasn't the case. The boat had not been decorated like a cow, and in fact, it had actually caught fire. The most unfortunate thing was the boat was brand new and had only been commissioned earlier that summer. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. Although it was filmed a few months ago, it is actually Christmas tomorrow. So we just wanted to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Luke's back in England this week and I'm home in Spain. It'll be coming out on Boxing Day. And stay tuned because next week we'll still be releasing our next video and we'll be heading further around the coast to Omis and we'll also be white water rafting. <laughs>